एवरीवन आई एम माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर राजेश गुब्बा आई एम द जनरल मेडिसिन एजुकेटर इन दिस सेशन आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन द इन्फेक्शस आर्थराइटिस दैट इज गोनोकोकल आर्थराइटिस सो गोनोकोकल आर्थराइटिस इट इज द डिजॉर्डर कॉज बाय निसीरिया गोनोरिया एंड and you should know what is the difference between non non gonococcal septic arthritis and gonococcal arthritis gonococcal arthritis it occurs in healthy individuals whereas non gonococcal arthritis right it is the one which is seen in in individual with prosthetic joint or in individual with a damaged joint so that is what is your non gonococcal septic arthritis but in case of gonococcal septic arthritis it is seen in a healthy subjects but what are the risk factors or what are the host factors that will influence the expression of the disease so gonococcal arthritis it is like almost 2 to 3 times more common in women than men right it is almost 2 to 3 times more common in women rather than men and in women it occurs mostly during menstruation right it mostly occurs during menstruation and pregnancy and at the same time you should know what is the age group at which you have this gonococcal arthritis in men and as well as women it is the disorder which occurs around the age group of 40 years and beyond 40 years the development of gonococcal arthritis it is very rare right development of gonococcal arthritis it is very rare and whereas if you take in men gonococcal arthritis is more common in those men who have intercourse with men right so homosexual men this gonococcal arthritis is very common and these homosexual men with high incidence of asymptomatic gonococcal pharyngitis and proctitis they predisposes them to disseminated gonococcal infection so basically remember gonococcal arthritis is also seen in men but in, it is seen in those men who have intercourse with men so these are the host factors that predispose to the development of gonococcal infection and for suppose right for suppose if there is incidence of recurrent disseminated gonococcal infection then that should make you to test the patients for ch50 level right you have to test the ch50 level within the patients if the patient has recurrent disseminated gonococcal infection right and for suppose if the ch50 level if it is increased then that predisposes for the development of recurrent disseminated gonococcal infection then what will be the signs and symptoms in these patients with the gonococcal infection there will be one to four days of migratory polyarthralgias right 1 to 4 days of migratory polyarthralgia and what are the joints which are affected in case of the gonococcal arthritis the joints which are affected is wrist knee and as well as the ankle joint right as well as the ankle joint and even the elbow is also affected within the upper limb so these are the joints which are affected in case of the gonococcal arthritis and there are two patterns that will get emerged now what are those two patterns out of these if you take the first pattern first pattern it is characterized by tenosynovitis
right it is characterized by tenosynovitis and this tenosynovitis most often it affects the wrist right it affects the fingers it affects the ankles or toes right so these are the structures which get affected by tenosynovitis and that is the first pattern and this tenosynovitis it is seen in almost 60 percentage of the patients affected with gonococcal arthritis then the second pattern is the purulent monoarthritis right the purulent monoarthritis it most commonly involves the following joints that includes the knee joint then followed by that there will be involvement of the wrist joint third involvement of ankle or the elbow joint right involvement of ankle or the elbow joint so this purulent monoarthritis it is seen in almost 40 percentage of patients and less than half of the patients they have even fever right less than half of the patients they also have the development of fever and less than one fourth they have genitourinary symptoms right less than one fourth they have genitourinary symptoms so these will be the manifestations in patients with the gonococcal arthritis and most of the patients will have asymptomatic but highly characteristic skin lesions as well right they also have the presence of the skin lesions and these skin lesions they usually consist of right they usually consist of 2 to 10 small necrotic pustules right 2 to 10 small necrotic pustules and these skin lesions they are distributed over the extremities and where exactly within the extremities that is over the palms and soles right that is over the palms and soles you have this skin lesions so that is about the clinical manifestations in patients with gonococcal arthritis so migratory polyarthralgia involving the wrist ankle knee and elbow are common at the outset there are two patterns that emerge in the first pattern you will have the tenosynovitis of the affected joint that is seen in almost 60 percentage of patients and in the second pattern you have the purulent monoarthritis and that pur purulent monoarthritis is seen in almost 40 percentage of patients and the joints which are affected is knee wrist ankle or elbow right and that purulent monoarthritis it is seen in almost 40 percentage of patients and less than half of the patients they have fever and less than one fourth of the patients they have the genitourinary symptoms and most of the patients will have asymptomatic but highly characteristic skin lesions that usually consists of two to ten small necrotic pustules and these skin lesions they are distributed over the palms and as well as soles next if you see the laboratory findings the laboratory findings WBCs they are elevated right and these WBCs they average around almost 30 to 60,000 cells right 30 to 60,000 cells per microliter and where do you observe this 30 to 60,000 cells per microliter that is in the synovial fluid examination right that is in the synovial fluid examination but if you take the peripheral blood right in the peripheral blood you should be aware of what will be the WBC count the peripheral blood leukocyte count averages about 10,000 cells per microliter right 10,000 cells per microliter right and it is elevated in less than one third of patients with the gonococcal arthritis and the next important laboratory finding is synovial fluid examination
right synovial fluid examination for the gram stain right synovial fluid examination for gram stain and this gram stain is positive in one fourth of the cases and culture in less than one half now this positive blood cultures they are uncommon right positive blood cultures they are uncommon you need to take the direct culture from urethra throat cervical and rectal cultures they should be done in all the patients since they are often positive in the absence of the local symptoms so that is where you have to collect the cultures from and another important investigation is urinary nucleic acid amplification test these NAT that is urinary nucleic acid amplification test they have excellent sensitivity and specificity for detection of Neisseria gonorrhea in the genitourinary sites so that is about the investigations in patients with the gonococcal arthritis now after having discussed about the blood investigation and synovial fluid examination you should know what will be the picture of imaging in case of the gonococcal arthritis right so imaging it is mainly the x-ray radiographs they are usually normal in early stages of the disease right or they may show only soft tissue swelling right or it may show only soft tissue swelling so this is what is the imaging test that we done that we do in case of the gonococcal arthritis then differential diagnosis for your gonococcal arthritis include reactive arthritis lyme disease then followed by the dramatic fever and sarcoidosis then infective endocarditis and meningococcemia now if you see the treatment in these patients with the infectious arthritis please remember antibiotics they definitely play a major role and in most cases patients in whom gonococcal arthritis is suspected they should be admitted to the hospital to confirm the diagnosis to exclude the endocarditis and then you need to start the treatment okay so all these patients with the right all these patients with the gonococcal arthritis right they have to be hospitalized then you need to exclude the other causes like you need to exclude the endocarditis and then you need to start the treatment now what will be that recommended initial treatment in patients with the gonococcal arthritis the recommended initial treatment is azithromycin right and this particular azithromycin should be given 1 gram orally single dose right so that is what is the drug that you need to give one gram orally as a single dose and to this you need to add a third generation cephalosporin right and this third generation cephalosporin that includes cefotaxim or ceftriaxone right so that is the third generation cephalosporin that has to be added for the treatment of the gonococcal arthritis and when you are giving azithromycin azithromycin enhances the eradication of gonorrhea and covers the potential co-infection with the chlamydia so this azithromycin will also treat potential co-infection with the chlamydia okay right now this chlamydia is responsible for atypical pneumonias right it is responsible for atypical pneumonias then how will be the prognosis in these patients with the infectious arthritis that is gonococcal arthritis generally gonococcal arthritis they respond dramatically in 24 to 48 hours of the antibiotic treatment right so within 24 to 48 hours of the antibiotic treatment these patients with the right these patients with the gonococcal arthritis they respond and the drainage drainage of the infected joint is required infrequently 
right the drainage of the infected joint requires in infrequently and in these patients the prognosis is that complete recovery is the rule right complete recovery is the rule so that is about the prognosis in these patients with the infectious arthritis so let me just summarize the gonococcal arthritis it is a prodromal migratory polyarthritis tenosynovitis is the most common sign purlin monoarthritis it is seen in almost 50 percentage of patients there will be characteristic skin lesions then most common in young women with menstruation or pregnancy and symptoms of urethritis Right, symptoms of urethritis, they are frequently absent. Then lastly, there will be dramatic response to antibiotics. Right, so that is how the diagnosis of the gonococcal arthritis is being made. Thank you very much.